Hi there everybody. Today I have some gouache deli paper to test. Now this channel isn't going to turn into a paper and art supply testing station. I am literally just showing you new things that I get to experiment with. So this paper was literally suggested to me by uh, Amazon and you can go search for it. It is provided by a company named Delhi.com and I don't think they specialize in art supplies but this is artist series gouache paper and I'm sure you can find it when you start looking for it. And my daughter is jumping up and down next to me because there are stickers in this pack. <laughs> I think I'll just give them to her. Unicorn stickers. Oh, it already feels nice. Oh, it has a texture like almost orange peel or it's like the texture on a golf ball. Not that I play golf, but I have been to the golf course with my husband quite regularly. And the other side is oh, very smooth. Feels nice, doesn't it? Okay. So I'm going to get uh, to a new workstation and collect the first watercolor pan I can find, a paintbrush and water, and I'll meet you right back here so that we can paint on this lovely paper. Okay, I'm back and I've got out the Sakura Koi watercolor paint set. Here's the paper. I'll give you some close-ups of the manufacturer and the website and the size and weight of the paper. It's a nice big sheet. I don't think it's a full A3, but it's close. And it's loose sheets. They're not on a block or on a sketchbook. But that just means I'll be able to pick up one and paint. So there's the texture a little bit closer. And do you see that golf ball texture? I'll show it to you when I lift up for the close-ups when I'm done painting. Or even, well let me show you quickly. All right, now that you had a sneak peek of what we are doing, I'm going to go ahead and just test out the paper for now. So you can have a look while I just paint some roses. I'll put on, I'll put on some music and you can just have a look while I chat. So today's topic is improving your art. And in all my years of working and having many, many hobbies, the only thing I can tell you is that if you do not sit down and get passionate about what you are busy with, nothing will improve. If you don't know how to put in a seam of a dress and you'd like to learn how to do that, you have to sit down and learn how to put in that seam. And then... Once you know the basics, you need to sit down and practice. Everything in this life that's worth doing takes time. I often hear students say, oh, I painted a rose and now I know how to paint roses. And I can promise you, you might know how to paint that rose, but can you repeat it? Can you improve on it? And can you do it on any type of surface. So I've got this thing in my mind where I have to do things over and over and over and over again to prove to myself that I can actually do it. There's a saying, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. 
So if I want to be healthy and not visit the doctors often, of course I have to eat that apple every day. If I don't eat the apple, guess what? I'll have more doctor visits. So that's just a funny way of explaining something that if you want to reach a certain goal, you absolutely have to work at it. I started painting in 2015 as an artist and before that I was a little bit of a hobbyist that touched on many subjects and I knew how to do a variety of things but three things stood out. I was a very good hairstylist and I did that for more than 20 years. So I know all about color and I know about style and balance and basic art fundamentals. And as a young girl, I saved up and bought my own sewing machine. It took me quite some time to get the money together. But my first sewing machine, my own sewing machine, I got when I was in year four or five. Which will make me about ten years old, nine or ten years old. Anyway... Even before I bought my own sewing machine, I used to sit for countless hours and making dresses for my dolls. Every single doll I had had a work outfit, she had a dancing outfit, and she had a dress for going to town, you know. But what I'm getting at is you have to work hard at the things that you want to accomplish and if you need to improve something in your paint then you have to sit down take the time and work at it
I'll show you a picture of a painting I did in 2015 and I was quite impressed with myself that day. Um, I painted a rose, this yellow rose, and I painstakingly poured over this painting for nearly two hours. I remember when I got up, I was almost exhausted from just doing this one thing. And when I compare this to what I've done today, I cannot believe how much I have improved. I made it my absolute mission to become very good at painting flowers. I also love painting portraits and landscapes and everything in between. But my main focus for the last couple of years have been flowers and especially in acrylic and watercolor mediums and as I was sent a student grade gouache set like you saw last week I was experimenting with using those unloved art supplies a little bit more again with the topic of improving my flowers so I have a very nice way of setting things up for myself I'll start with an idea that I will write down in pencil or pen in a notebook and I'll scribble some thumbnails down so that I can sort of get my mind organized to where I want to go and then I literally sit down and do paintings of my thumbnail ideas these are little small squares that I just fill up with a few ideas, get some colors down and work out the value scale so that we have light, medium and dark tones. This will bring interest to your paintings and of course help you to differentiate between the depths and make it interesting. So it takes some time for my planning strategies to come together, but that's just the way my mind thinks. I have to plan things out and reason things out for myself before I can let go and just let the art appear. So I need time to be intuitive. All right, so when you sit down with your art, figure out a strategy or a plan for you to reach the goal you are aiming for and once you have a few ideas down move on over and get some thumbnails done or color swatches work out your color palette for that painting don't just jump in with the whole color palette and think you're going to be happy at the end rather do a little bit of planning beforehand and then switch over to the actual painting okay now many of you know that I've got a Skillshare class well several Skillshare classes and I'd like to invite you again today to take a look at my plan like an artist and the brush strokes class and then also the painting with unloved art supplies that is my newest class I'll leave some links in the description below so you'll see below this video is a show more button you can just click on that and the drop down uh, description box will open up with links you can use my teachers link to sign up for two weeks premium membership and you also get links directly to my classes there's some other links there that will take you to my website and other interesting things. So go over there and have a look and let me finish up this painting and I'll give you some more tips when we see each other on the Skillshare classes. Uh, I hope you enjoyed today's Meet Me in the Studio and I'm looking forward to seeing you again soon. All right, bye bye.